Hi, welcome to A Watchman's Journal. This is a special episode today. I am welcoming back John Redenbow of Dream Life Decoded. John, I'm so glad you said yes to being on today. It's always such a pleasure to be on with you, Diana. Thank you so much for hosting me again. I just love it when we get together and get to share dreams. It is really fun because I absolutely love the world of dreams because I love mysteries. I've always loved mysteries. And that's what night parables are. They are mysteries that with the Holy Spirit, we get to decode and figure out what it is he's trying to to speak to us and share with us. And uh, today we're actually going to be going over some of my dreams. Yay. (laughs) Finally, we get to hear yours. (laughs) Well, I love bringing other people on too as well, but, but it will be fun today. You know, it's really fun to have your dream looked at and uh, shared about. And you do that. Um, on your His Glory program, right? You have a live dream uh, program where you look at people's dreams. Every Tuesday, we do like two hours of live dream interpretation where it's just like we've done with Ash or Brian, or like we're going to do with you today is we get to share a dream, but instead of obviously taking a whole hour to do one dream, we'll do two hours, but we'll do, you know, it could be 10 or 20 people And they get in and it's anywhere from a five to 15 minute touch on each one. But we found that so many people love kind of having their dream interpreted in that setting. It's a lot of fun. Is there any possibility we could do that for my channel? Yeah, let's do that. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. I know all of you out there are dreamers too. And I would love it if you could share your dream and have John um, talk to you about it. We could, we could even do it this coming Tuesday. Like, why don't we come on maybe an hour and a half before live dream starts and we'll do an hour and a half actually on your channel, broadcast it for your audience. And so they can come on and anybody that has a dream, we don't, we don't pre-screen. We don't need to know in advance. What we'll do is as soon as the show starts broadcasting, we'll broadcast live. I'll put a link in the comments and say to share a dream, click here. They click there and then they end up in the back of StreamYard and we can just bring them into the discussion and they can share a dream. Awesome. So they just need what, like a laptop or an iPad or a phone? Yeah. Any of those devices work and they can connect in and then you'll bring them in and they share a dream. That's yeah. So pr- preferably awesome. something with the camera, because obviously we're a, a TV kind of visual show right, versus right. just talking, but yeah, if they have a camera, they can come on and uh, share their dream. And we, we, we ask people to kind of keep them short because mm-hmm. if they're like two or three paragraphs long, it could take, as you know, it can take an hour to do one of those dreams. And so just, like a paragraph or less, they do a short dream. And then we get to tag team. You and I both get to say, you know, Hey, well, here's what I'm getting. What are you getting Diana? And you're like, well, I saw this. And, and that's a lot of fun. All right. Oh, that sounds really fun. I'm looking forward to that. So you guys next Tuesday, um, what time should we say about 430 Eastern? Yeah. 430 Eastern. That sounds good. So be looking, 4.30 Eastern, you'll get a notification that I'm on live. So come on and join us. It's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be a blast. You guys yeah. will love it. <laughs> Thanks, John. That's awesome. Thank you for offering to do that. I'm looking forward to it. That is going to be a blessing. Well, mm-hmm. I think we should dive in to some of my dreams. I was just talking with John before uh, we started recording and just saying I used to have like epic dreams like Ash has, but lately, the last few years, I just have like very short, very condensed dreams and uh, it works for a program like this. So <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, why why he decided to change the way He spoke to me in dreams, but um, it is what it is. And everybody's dreams are different because everybody's different. And he speaks to us differently as individuals. That's very precious. 
it's fascinating how that works too. It is. Yeah. So this first one I actually had on June 21st of 2018, which is halfway through. While you talk. Okay. So halfway through <laughs> halfway through DJT, his uh, first term. <clears throat> and so this stream did not make any sense to me uh, when I had it because I had no context for um, what the dream was saying, but I'll just share it and um, we'll see what John has to say. So in this dream, I was in the room with DJT. Now it was a big room, like a banquet hall, and there were little tables all around with people like eight to 10 people around each table and everybody is talking and laughing and uh, DJT stands up and he, you know, makes a few remarks. And then he said, and, and I noticed at each place we had like a little favor cup, you know, like you used to get at birthday parties that would have trinkets or peanuts or something in it. But those were at our table and there were kind of colored stones and some other things in them. And he told us that some of them had real diamonds in them. So we're all looking, you know, and oh my gosh, I pull out this honker. There's this huge diamond in my favorite cup. Wow. And I am really excited. So I'm holding it like this and suddenly whoosh, there's this dark haired, dark faced waiter right here. Like, and I, I don't, I have nothing against dark hair and dark featured people. It's just his, his heart was dark. I could sense that. So he was dark, dark, dark. And he offers to take that for me and he's <clears throat> going to put it in something. But I see him palm the real diamond in his mm. pocket and he replaces it with a fake. Well, I'm in the middle of this big banquet hall with all these people, but it's like, I don't care. I'm, I call him out and I say, this guy just stole my diamond and the police come and he gets dragged off in handcuffs. And the room is like pretty quiet at that point. <laughs> and I kind of mutter under my breath that he's a Democrat. Well, that brought the house down. Everybody's roaring with laughter and it it broke the the tension in the room. And that was the end of the dream. Wow. What an amazing dream. This is super exciting. <laughs> you know, and there's been talk of of the diamonds or the crown jewels or <clears throat> things like that has shown up prophetically in several dreams and i think he, even in some prophetic words too right probably i, I can't think very think right rich now. had a word about oh well that's he had a word in january 18th of 2023 but he just brought that uh, dream encounter back up again and i heard it last year but i did not hear the part that i heard this year because uh, at the time that I had this dream about a diamond being stolen, I had no idea that in 2020 they were going to call a stolen selection the diamonds had been stolen. So there's right. that possible meaning. But Barry opened up a whole other world of meanings. And dreams can have layers of meanings. They mm -hmm. don't necessarily just mean one thing. So this is the part that got me. He said there was a new system ready to go to replace the old server. He was in a Federal Reserve, the, the headquarters yes. of Federal yes, Reserve. The quantum system. And yes, yes. And he said it was a <clears throat> quantum system like nothing ever seen before. So he, the, the dream was he saw the, the bad feds trying to save everything and keep everything from crashing. And then he was with the good guys who were introducing this new system, they were ready to plug it in. He said it had been years in development and was ready to roll out. It was smaller, more compact and lightning speed faster than anything ever before. So he mm. saw a case opened up like of one of the servers. I don't even know if they call them that, but inside there was a core that looked like the most perfect diamond, crystal clear and bright. It reflected light in a way I've never seen. It was bursting like the sun. 
This was something very new and different about this technology. This was the future. So it's interesting because I only had one diamond stolen. But it was a honker, right? It was a big oh, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't about to let that guy get away with taking it. <laughs> I love your boldness, how you just called it out. And and that's part of that's part of the dream. I mean, that's a <clears throat> really interesting part. Um, wow. So in a big room, well, I don't have the answers, but God has the answers. So we'll just thank you, Holy Spirit, for illuminating us and sharing with us um, exactly what the interpretation is. I always love how Joseph and Daniel, they started in humility. They always yeah. confessed, I don't have the answers, but God does. And so we we try to keep that as <clears throat> when we train people how to do this, we always say, hey, you know, it's not really about you. And it kind of takes the pressure off where it's like, you know, I just want to hear what God says. I'm not trying to come mm -hmm. up with my ideas or share what my thoughts are. Nobody cares what my thoughts are. We just care what the Lord says. <laughs> and, and when it's the Lord, there's that, yeah, that makes sense. That's, yeah, that's the answer. You know, it just resonates. Yeah. And so I love the fact that you're at a banquet, like a mm -hmm. banquet hall. It's a big place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And so it, it invokes several things. It invokes the idea of celebration. It invokes the idea of a reception with the president. Excuse me. And most people, I would think most people probably never in their lives get the opportunity to go to a reception where the president is the guest of honor or the speaker. And if you do, um, it it's probably not a whole lot of times and it's probably something you talk about for a long time. I remember when I was at the inaugural ball or when I was at this or that, or I went to this event. And especially, again, we're not talking a rally with 100,000 people there. We're talking a much more intimate setting. There may be a thousand people in the room, but everybody's around tables of eight to 10. And <laughs> it's not just a one and done. Hey, I'm going to say my campaign speech and get on the plane. It's no, we're going to sit together. We're going to break bread together. I'm going to share some comments. It's much more of an event or a gala or an evening. And so again, you never go to those things in jeans. You know, you're always dressed to the <laughs> nines, suits and ties, ladies and in, in, in dresses and looking beautiful. And so it invokes that idea of <clears throat> almost like a wedding reception kind of a feel. It's a, certainly a reception gala type of event. Did you have any idea what the event was? No, okay. I didn't. And you probably didn't have any idea when the event was. No. No. So no, but it, I thought it was significant that I had it on June 21st, first uh -huh. day of summer, longest day of the year. Yes. And it's very important to the occult. That is interesting. But summer we solstice. were celebrating on that day. Wow. Good catch. My birthday is the 24th. And of course, Aww, awesome. <clears throat> the 24th of. When was it? 22 was when they reversed Roe versus Wade. Uh, was it 22 or 21? 22. I think it was 22. I think it was 22. Yeah. And and I love that they reversed that on my birthday. I just That's beautiful. <laughs> what a great day to be born. <laughs> Definitely. <clears throat> but the 21st, ooh, summer solstice. That that's makes me want to research the whole summer solstice thing, but it probably gets beyond the scope of, you know, we like to dive deep on these things. Eight to 10 people at a table. Mm -hmm. I think that's significant because eight is often referred to, you think of seven as whole or godly perfection or like the numbers of days in a week. And so you think of eight, a lot of times people think of a starting over or a new beginning, um, <clears throat> something that's fresh. To me, it invokes Isaiah 43, 18, Forget the former things and do not remember the things of the past. For behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Can you not perceive it? I am making rivers in the desert and streams in the wasteland. And so rivers in the desert and streams in the wasteland is the idea of what's also talked about later in Isaiah 45, treasures in darkness. Right. And of course, where do you find diamonds? 
They're in the mines. They're in the dark. They're in the ground. They have to be unearthed. They have to be discovered. They're in dark places, you know, <clears throat> and even in the dream, they're kind of buried in this favor cup. Yeah. That's so right. it wasn't like it was sitting on your plate. Mm. It's like you had to, everybody's looking in their cup after <laughs> he said, hey, eh, there's some real diamonds in there. And you're like, ah, I want to see if I got one. And sure enough, <laughs> you got a big <laughs> one. So <clears throat> 10 is also another number of, of completion. Um, a lot of people think about 10 commandments, like the completion of the law. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many things, you know, it's obviously from single digits to double digits. So there's the whole idea of, a, a whole nother level or a whole nother phase. It's like a second story would be on a house. Mm -hmm. You know, you're entering into a new, um, new dimension because you go from one digits to two digits. And so when, when it's eight to 10, I think just it's significant that there's even that number and not that you were counting, but you just had the impression. I just felt like eight to 10 people. Mm -hmm. Now, eight to 10 too is also <clears throat> pretty intimate. You think of eight as in four sets of couples. You think of 10 of maybe a little bit bigger, um, but still it's not 12 or 15 people where you're like, you don't know every eight to 10 people, you're going to introduce yourself to everybody mm -hmm. at the table that you're with. You know, 15, maybe it's just the three next to you on either side, but <clears throat> it's intimate enough that it's a round table, which means everybody's on equal setting. Mm -hmm. And, and you're going to get to know everybody that's there, everybody in your immediate proximity, which I think is really interesting because again, it's, it's a more intimate setting. It's, it's, it's also interesting. I just feel the need to reference this for some reason. <clears throat> if you do a study on the Acts 2 church, Acts 2, I think it's 42 to 46, are the verses when it talks about, you know, they had everything in common and they met together mm -hmm. and they prayed and they, they mentioned prayer. They mentioned worship. They mentioned the apostles teaching. They mentioned miracles each one time. They mentioned three times in those four verses, breaking bread together. Mm -hmm. And I, I think mm -hmm. there's, it's not, there's a, a very significant, even a spiritual thing that happens when we share bread or when we break bread, when we share a meal, when we share sustenance together. Mm -hmm. And again, if you think of the, the feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the 4,000, even the fish in the nets to miracle after Jesus died, rose again, he's in his resurrected body. They're out fishing. He comes out and says, meet me on the shore. And they get this catch of like 169 large fish. And he's sitting there by the fire roasting bread. And so bread and fish, just like the feeding of the 5,000, just like mm -hmm. the feeding of the 4,000, but the fish in the nets, one miracle was how he called Peter. And yeah. so all of this goes back. And of course, this is the meal where he restores Peter. Peter, do you love me? Feed my yes. sheep. I actually did a blog post when I had, I had a biblical economist, <laughs> the blog, because I, I had written a book on biblical economics and, <laughs> and I dove deep into this setting. And I said, considering the miracle of how he called Peter, considering how he fed people with fish and loaves, and considering the setting where he's feeding them, and then he says, Peter, do you love me? Yes, feed my sheep. I believe he was being literal, literally feed them, not give them the meat and the milk of the word. No, literally feed mm -hmm. people. And what happens like right in, in Acts, the early church, right at the beginning. And this is why they needed deacons is because there was the daily distribution right. of food. They didn't even have a building yet, Diana. And they were wow. daily feeding people. And I believe wow. that there was something that is probably missed in translation over the thousands of years that it's been since that Peter mm. understood when Jesus looked at him and said, do you love me? Yes. Feed my sheep. Wow. Feed my people. It was a literal part of mm -hmm. take care of the bodily needs of people that can't take care of themselves. And wow. at this time was particularly the widows. Yeah. And so that being the setting, I think is interesting because again, you know me, I always like to go back to, to scripture. Uh-huh. 
and we've spent so much time studying the dreams of the Bible and all of that stuff. And if you look at the significant things that happened in scripture around meals, mm. that, I, I tell you, if I owned a catering company instead of dream interpretation <laughs> as a focus, I would be finding out every major significant meal in scripture. And I bet you could write a book wow. on that's you know, so the cool. table setting, what they <laughs> ate, what the menu was, what happened at these different places. Like there yeah. was treason that occurred at the banquet table of the whole Jezebel and Ahab thing. Like yeah. that's where if they accuse neighbor of, of being, of being a, uh, <clears throat> a blasphemer and then they yes. drug them out and stone them. That yes. whole conspiracy unfolded wow. at a banquet. And then you think of the banquet that Esther made. Yeah. She saved all of the people because it was like, let's get the king and, and his advisor together. And and then, of course, who could forget the Last Supper? And who let's, can forget the handwriting on the wall that appeared? Oh, yes. At a dinner. Well, <laughs> Daniel 5, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, so many of these are wow. just fascinating. Wow. And, and, and even this one, even the... The, what I call the fish in the nets too. It's just a bunch of guys. It's really kind of campy. I see Jesus around a yeah. fire on the beach, just mm -hmm. waiting for them to bring their ship and they pull the, their boat up and they come out with all the, Hey, bring a couple of those fish over here. And I got the bread cooking and it's to me eating. I'm sure they ate fish and bread a lot, mm -hmm. but specifically just fish and bread reminds them of all, you know, feeding of the 5,000, yes. feeding of the 4,000, even the fish in the nets, one miracle. Like there's all this history. If you think about the times that they had with Jesus and even the breaking of the bread for the last supper. Yes. And then of course, when he died, they probably thought we're never going to eat with him again. And now here they are, he's cooking the bread. He's baking the bread. Wow. Like there's something to be said about even the setting is, is just a wow thing. Um, for me, the round tables always speak of covenant too. Oh yeah, yeah. And we're a covenant nation, and here was this banquet laid out for us, really from DJT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's almost like because so when you had this dream, he was president, right? It was twenty eighteen, right in the middle of his right. term, first term. S so if he's speaking, it's probably a state event, you know, because I don't know, does a sitting president go and speak at a bunch? I mean, they're not campaigning. They're not doing fundraisers. I'm no, sure I felt like it was at the White House. Yeah, that's that's kind of the feeling yeah. that I got, too. Yeah. That's interesting. There's I had another very significant dream of a friend of mine that was an advisor to Trump that had a dream that unpacked some very significant things for him and his destiny. And it was a dinner at the wow. white house. Oh, cool. Yeah. So this is, I love this setting because it reminds me of my prophetic history with interpreting that dream. And I said some very particular things to him, this is going to happen. Um, <clears throat> and it did. Wow. I actually said the president of the United States is going to, do something involving promoting you in a certain way. Wow. And that's what I call go, no go. We call that actionable intelligence. It's not like, well, we're going to be blessed or there's going to be a transfer of wealth this year. Like, how do you put your arms around that and measure was mm -hmm. that true or not? If the president of the United States has to promote somebody, if the chief of staff does it, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. If they end up in a different position, you're wrong. But what happens is that I don't hear from this guy for a couple of weeks and all of a sudden I get a link on my phone and he sends me and I'm like, you know, no explanation. It's just a link. And I'm like, okay, click on the link, whitehouse.gov. I'm like, well, this will be interesting. White House press release. The president of the United States, Donald John Trump, is pleased to appoint this guy to another position, not part, like the parameters that I had laid out in the wow. dream interpretation were fulfilled exactly. In fact, so much so that people were like, that's almost like your cupbearer moment uh -huh. because it was very similar to the, the senior leader, the executive is going to promote you back to your position and 
restore you, except he had never been demoted. It was actually a promotion and an additional tasking, but it was done by decree from the president. And wow. it was based on a dream. Wow. I forgot about that. That's totally very cool. That very cool. But it was probably around, well, no, this would have been 20. This would have been after this would probably would have been 2019, 2019 or after. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. So cool. Well, I love this setting. So this setting, it also reminds me of scripture again. And I love it when God brings scripture to mind when we're talking dreams, because he speaks so much through his word. And so much through his word, even about dreams. So understanding, having, you know, this is one of the best reasons <laughs> for me anyway, why you should read scripture is because this is God's history. It's our history too, as the church and of the faith and all of that. But it's like when he was on earth and he was walking around with his friends, like when he references something like, like what we just talked about, the feeding of the, the, the. Well, the fish in the nets too, when we reference, or even the Last Supper, I, I'm sure it it can evoke a certain feeling for us. How do you think that feels for Jesus? Like he lived that, he knew what was going to happen next. And so, when you're talking about having dinner with your friends, I mean, this was, man, they're not going to understand. They don't know what's going to happen in the next 24 hours, and it's going to be really hard. And they're going to want to quit, and they're all going to be scattered. And the, mm. you know, he's going to deny me three times. Like he had all of this in his head, probably wow. as foreknowledge, yeah. as he's breaking the bread. And Judas is right there, mm -hmm. and he's just like could have taken him out in an instant. And he's like, nope, this is how it has to be. I'm making the conscious decision to go through this, and. Wow. So That's a who, lot of discussion. For who just do you discussion. think, who do you think I represent in the dream? Just like people, the regular people of our country. Um, uh, well, I don't think you're regular. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're special. Uh, I think wow. you're part of the hidden remnant. Hmm. And and it would be easy to say, oh, the bride of Christ or the church, but I don't I don't get yeah, that. Because, I don't think so. You know, there's a lot of flashy pastors, and that's not you. And then there's a lot of people that just kind of go and check the box. I went to church, and that's not you. Like you set aside, and we were just talking today. You set aside time every morning to be still and hear the Lord, and say, God, what are you saying? Yeah. And I know, just because I know you, Diana, that you ask Him questions. You know, what's happening in our nation? How can I pray? What What do you want to share? What is going on? Tell me the truth of the world. And so I believe you're you're like the daughter that climbs up on, on his father's lap, her father's lap, mm -hmm. and leans the head against his chest. And like, I want to hear mm -hmm. your heartbeat, God. I want to yeah. hear from you. And you have such that sweet spirit about you. And that's one of the things I love about listening to the things that the Lord shares with you. And, oh, and thank you. as you know, um, you but I wasn't sweet to the dark again. guy, huh? I wasn't sweet to the dark guy. No. Well, and, <laughs> and, and there's a whole, there's a whole nother part of that too, because I think it's that boldness where <laughs> for in the age of political correctedness, it was, well, we go along to get along and we don't want to be mm -hmm. harsh. And we don't in the age mm -hmm. where everybody was persecuting, djt because of mean tweets then we're like just trying to be good little christians and you know bear each other's burdens but there comes a time when you're like hey <laughs> you're not stealing my diamond and so it's that boldness that's that's arisen and i don't know what you were doing back then but i don't know that you were as vocal as you are now i well i didn't have as many followers that's for sure um, were you doing a weekly show back then? Um, gosh, I didn't even know when I started doing my um, videos. I don't think I was. I don't think well, 2018 I had, was. I was posting six years ago now. my journal entries, uh -huh. um, but I don't think I did videos at that time. He takes me steps at a time. You want me to do what? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I think it's interesting because, again, 
you mentioned you had the feeling that it was the White House. You had the feeling that it was an event put on by Trump himself, mm -hmm. that you were had the privilege of being one of the few that were invited to that. You were seated at a round table, which is equal setting. I've actually gotten round tables in dreams to the point that I've gone back and looked up the history of the Knights of the Round Table. Gosh, yeah. And what's interesting is the Knights of the Round Table, they were all barons. They were all land barons. They were okay. all rulers. And I just thought it interesting because this was another dream about Trump and the fact that the people around the round table were barons. <laughs> just like, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> But they were people who had a level of authority and authority in the land, in the nation, but they were on equal setting. So they could come together and reason together and talk about things, and which I think is interesting. Um, so you're at possibly the White House. You're at a state dinner. It's an official thing. It's being hosted by um, Trump and Trump comes out and there's a lot of laughing and talking. So it's not a somber moment. It's not, um, for some reason, I even think of uh, one of the events that typically is put on every year is the, the White House press corps dinner. And I know they try to have a comedian that can both make people laugh and be appropriate. And usually they fail at one or both of those. A lot of times they bring somebody that's not appropriate at all and, I think, didn't Trump like cancel the White House press corps he dinner? Did. He did. I thought he did. Yeah. Just because there was such an enmity between yes. the dis or the gross level of disrespect mm -hmm. that the press had for him and talked over him. And mm -hmm. I would have thrown those people out of my house too, I got to tell you. But, yeah. but I just thought it's interesting that this is not that flavor. This is the flavor of people that love him, that are glad mm -hmm. to be there, that are honored to be in the presence. And it reminds me, what is it? Proverbs, when you sit down to dine with a king, put a knife to your throat and watch your words. But also the parable that, you know, take the place of lowly position and let him call you up versus being humbled in the presence of a prince. Yeah. You know, and so I think all of that comes into play. The idea that you're in the room is significant. It says something of you. It says something of the stature. Now, again, my view, as you know, is all dreams come from God. Mm -hmm. And so God is crafting a narrative and a movie where he's put you as the central figure of this. You are the star of the show mm -hmm. in a movie that he's presenting to you, which is just takes your breath away if you think about it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And one of the side characters happens to be the president of the United States, yeah, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> but it's not about the president. It's more about you. Now, the president certainly has a significant role to play. But as far as like supporting actors, there's the waiter and there's Trump. And I don't know if you named or really described anybody else in the dream. No, I don't think I knew. I didn't know that I knew anybody. Right. So Trump is giving remarks and he's basically saying um, there's favor cups in front of you all. And people are like, oh, yeah, there's all these colored stones. And then he says, in some of them, there are real diamonds. And so basically, it's like the part of the night where he's like, there's a surprise for certain ones of you. And the idea of a diamond represents so much of being chosen. Mm. You know, obviously, when somebody gets down on one knee and gives you a diamond ring, that's <laughs> you're chosen for life, you know. Um, <clears throat> but this is a whole different level because it's so much bigger than what typically you would have. Yeah. I mean, it's like a 40 <laughs> carat thing, you yeah. know. Yeah. You know, one of those those ring suckers they put with a big blow yes. thing on <laughs> it. Like, it was a huge, huge <laughs> diamond. And so to get that, I mean, and, and think of the value of what a diamond like that would be hundreds of thousands, oh probably goodness. millions of dollars, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so the idea that not everybody's getting them is the idea, again, of a remnant, of a select few, uh, mm -hmm. of a select few that 
Now, and, and if you go to a dinner like that, you have a name tag. Like it, it's not, well, sit wherever you want. Uh, uh that's not how state dinners are run. No. Like it is very much thought there's a whole committee of putting people next to other people and how, what they're mm -hmm. close proximity mm -hmm. of distance because that talks about stature and favor and are you in the back of the room off to the side or are you in the front next to the president's table and and so you didn't get that diamond by accident mm -hmm. so what this dream is saying on the base level is you've been invited which means you've been called up you've been promoted you're being celebrated and you're being invited with the president, by the president, by the president's people to this dinner. And then you're being favored with this huge diamond, you know, which yeah. is a literally a deposit. And diamonds are deposited in rock and in the ground mm -hmm. and they have to be mined and ored and dug out. But mm -hmm. there's this huge deposit that has been made into your cup. Other people got other things. Other people got maybe emeralds or rubies or whatever, but you got the big diamond. And maybe there were other people that got the big yeah, diamond. The could have been. doesn't mention that. What you yeah. know is you got this big honking diamond, which I think is awesome. <laughs> and right as you get it, the thief is there immediately to, oh, I'll take that for you. Mm -hmm. And then to palm it into his, mm -hmm. you know, the sleight of hand into his mm -hmm. pocket and then to try to <laughs> pull some fake stuff. You catch him and you say, no, I want it back. Mm -hmm. You know, and part of it is the dark, the fact that he was dark skinned and dark hair. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, God is not a racist. So no. I, people that are just like, <laughs> but he, he also is not politically correct. Like a dark person could be a person in a dark robe, but no, he used skin and hair. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if somebody's in a dark robe, it's like a mantle they wear that they can take off and they could be light mm -hmm. underneath. This person inherently is dark. Okay, They're a dark being. Mm -hmm. um, and so people could be like, well, is that a demonic thing? Is that, well, I think it's demonically based. Mm -hmm. But because it wasn't a demon, it wasn't a monster, a dragon, a snake, or any number of these things, an alligator, as we've seen God show in so many different dreams, even dreams related to Trump, we've seen all those kind of things. It's a human being that is dark. And so I think it's a person that has probably turned themselves over to the darkness, and they're an agent of the dark, and they just happen to be... Um, this is what I hear, a government employee. Because the government is supposed to serve the people and he's a waiter. You know? Right. And so it's a dark, nefarious government employee wow. that is trying to steal wow. the favor and the wealth mm -hmm. that Trump is giving during his presidency to select few people. <clears throat> and he's trying to take it. <clears throat> Yeah. Which again reminds me of the selection <laughs> and all of that. And I don't, there's not a whole lot of people in my life that are rejoicing about how much better off they are in this four years than in the last four. Nope. <laughs> like I have never heard that ever. I don't know anyone that's ever heard that. I do have people that are dead because they were forced to to do certain things medically. I do know people that, uh, you know, are hurting. I do know people that are talking about the high cost of gas and, you know, at this point, I think we're all kind of used to it. Unfortunately, it's almost seems like a dream to have gas under $2, let alone a dollar something. And it just wasn't that long ago, No, you know, and even interest rates and everything else. I mean, it was so, 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 so much better mm -hmm. under Trump. And the entire time that he was in office, from the moment he announced going down the escalator, they did everything in their power to lie, persecute, take him out, impeach him, assassinate him. Like when you know the things that I've heard and have friends and certain, I mean, you, you hear this stuff. And yeah, and and I believe it's because their world is getting turned upside down. 
yeah. and the corruption, the party for them is over. And the mm -hmm. jewels that have been for a select few of people that stole them before are now being given back to the American people, but particularly to hand-selected remnants. And so that's what I see you representing, okay. Diana, is a hand-selected remnant where you've been singled out and given uh, a diamond. Um, you know, I'm I'm thinking... Is there a scriptural connotation for diamond? I know like the pearl of great price, but diamond in particular. Hmm. Not ones that come into mind. We'll have to look that up. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's listening, if put it in the comments, but. Um, and it might be called something different than a diamond. Yeah. Yeah, like a chrysolite or something like that. It, that could be. Yeah, I think you even think of the Proverbs 31, she is worth more than rubies. Uh-huh. Um, but and then of course you think of the pieces of like the the breastplate that the high priest wore. Right. Um, but I don't I can't think of diamond, particularly a big diamond mentioned in scripture. So that's that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, and it was colored stones. A lot of others had colored stones, but you get it's kind of like the lion's share. You get this. Not everybody got a diamond and not everybody certainly got a big diamond. And so there's something there's something that's being communicated to you specifically mm -hmm. from Trump to you. And it could be mm -hmm. that, you know, he sees. He's seen the words of wisdom that you have, or he's honored your prophetic gift and he's, you know, seen that you're on his glory. He watches his glory. We've, you know, we've heard. And and so th there could be something where you've caught his attention and for some reason, and I think what's interesting is again, this was in 2018. Right. So this may actually be coming into play now. And it's interesting that we're talking about it six years later. Yeah and not at the time when he was still in office. And so <clears throat> it's also interesting what happened in 2020 with the selection and what a lot of us feel or can prove or whatever, um, kind of the preponderance of the evidence for those that have a brain and understand the scientific method can kind of <laughs> see that, yeah, it just doesn't, yeah, anyway. <laughs> but um, so the whole idea of the thiefdom you know, this dark, nefarious figure mm -hmm. coming that as soon as it's been recognized that you're you have this lion, you have this diamond. It almost reminds me of the Willy Wonka thing when he gets the golden ticket, like immediately people start trying to grab it from him. They like instantly want to take it. And that's the thing mm -hmm. here is this this dark waiter, dark haired person. Um, he wants to take it and he's saying that. What does he say to you? I'm going to. I'll take that for you. I'll take that for you. Yeah. Uh, no, you won't. <laughs> but he like grabs it out of your hand, right? Uh huh. Like you don't give it to him like, oh, okay. No, I didn't give it to him. He's he just took like, it. I'll take that yeah. for you. And then palms it and you mm -hmm. catch him. And then this is, this is, I think a really big part is it's the idea of, I think the diamond represents um, again, it keeps taking me back to Isaiah 45, I think it's 13, um, which is the call of Cyrus, where, but where God says, I will give you treasures in darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that, and this is the purpose, so that yeah. you will know, I am the Lord, your God, who has called you by name. Wow. So I feel like there's something related to Trump knowing your name. Hmm. Because again, God didn't give you the diamond. Trump gave you the diamond in the dream. And so the context is, and I don't think Trump represents God or anything like that. No, I no, I think he was a political him. thing. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that there may be an opportunity uh, for political favor hmm. where you're going to be asked to, I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Be on a prayer team, be on an advisory team, go to a dinner and even just be honored, um, <clears throat> something like that. Wow, that blows um, my mind. 
<laughs> yeah, I think there's a literal component that at some point I just I just feel like I, I see this picture of like getting a phone call from you and you're so excited. Remember when we did that dream? <laughs> Remember what you said? Well, guess what? I got invited today. And I, I just I feel like there's gonna be a moment and unquestionably you're gonna know. You're like, this is it. This is it. And so I think what's really interesting is you don't put up with being robbed. Mm -hmm. And this boldness comes over you. And, you know, where somebody may have talked to the people around them or look for the secret service or security, like you just announce it to the whole place. <laughs> you know, hey, you're not taking my time. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. He stole my diamond is what you said, right? Mm hmm. And so, so this is the idea of a whistleblower, of a person that is no longer um, quiet, you know, mm -hmm. just go along to get along, dress mm -hmm. nice. You're like, mm -hmm. no, you're full on. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so you call it out. And even the palm thing, I, I just, I, I want to go back to that because I, I see the picture of, and not that it's related to him, but this is what I saw. Fauci, when he comes out mm -hmm. and he's standing on the side and then he takes his hand and, you know, the whole hidden hand thing, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which is Masonic symbology or whatever, the whole sleight of hand, the hidden hand. And mm -hmm. that's the thing he's doing this sleight of hand palming it, um, mm -hmm. which is just the whole idea of him wanting to get, um, and it, uh, I don't think the dream has anything to do with, with Fauci at all, but just that idea of the whole hidden hand thing that there's a, not just one person it's not just an opportunist that happened to be there it's like a whole conspiracy of dark people that are yeah. servants of the people they're waiters but mm -hmm. it's not one guy that decided to get on the catering team that then tried to steal your diamond it's a whole group of people that are trying to prevent the prosperity that trump was bringing yes. from reaching the hands of the servants of the most high in particular yeah. the honored remnant Mm -hmm. and they would, and, and, and I think they did. I mean, part of the whole marketing and the whole media barrage of labeling people from the whole deplorables to the whole racist yeah. thing, to the whole this and that is to try to create a separation between Trump and his base. Mm -hmm. They tried to shame mm -hmm. people into whether it was through the media or through the pundits or through the, the, uh, the comedians, which frankly, like that whole lot, are all just useful idiots, frankly. And to try to build a separation mm -hmm. between Trump and his base, they tried to shame people into, mm -hmm. you can't be a Christian and yeah. like Trump because he's a mean tweeter or because he's racist. And everything they said mm -hmm. about him being racist, every single thing was an abject straight up lie. And if you fact checked any of it, even from the whole Mexicans coming across the border thing, he never said they were all rapists. He never said, I mean, there was so much that they, again, every single day, masters of Leviathan, yeah. twisting his yep. words, mm -hmm. painting him in a bad mm -hmm. light. And it was mm -hmm. because they wanted to steal the wealth that was coming into the hands of the American people, but not just that, the remnant, and not just that, the prophetic, and not just that, those that have been set apart and honored. Mm -hmm. Wow. The golden haired queens <laughs> like yourself. That's incredible. Wow. <clears throat> and so you catch them. Yeah. And so I, I think that that part right there even speaks to your discernment. Mm -hmm. You know, because to, you know, again, think about it. If, if they're going to be a thief at that level, they're going to be a good thief. Yeah. They're not going to get all the way in the room and and get all the way up to the to that level of mm -hmm. whatever and then get caught with a sleight of hand trick. They're going to be so good. They're going to be the kind of person that bumps into you and you don't know until three hours later that my wallet's stolen. Yeah, you know. And so it's not that they were a True. bad thief. I believe. Yeah. I believe it's that your discernment is off the charts. Mm -hmm. Soon as this guy, as soon as you're like, hey, I got this great, I'll take that for you. Boom. You immediately are like, no, he stole my diamond and you call it like it is and you call it out loudly. And this is what I think needs to happen more and more. I think average, not that because you don't, you don't represent the average American person, but 
but even average American people, but especially the called out remnant and certainly those of us that have any level of influence need to call out loudly and say the dark figures, particularly government employees, are not going to steal our inheritance. Yeah. You know, when you think of a diamond that big, by the way, you think of it, it would be inappropriate for it to be on a ring. <laughs> yes. It would be so ridiculously <laughs> gaudy and it would yeah. be hard to carry it around. And you have yeah. to have five guys around you with guns, and <laughs> you know, because of people that would want to steal it. So you yeah. think of, and I know we talked about this a little bit before, but you think of like the crown jewels. Mm. You think of, I mean, it's going to need to be a massive setting to put this into some yeah. something. Or mm -hmm. the other thing that I think of is industrial yeah. use. Uh -huh. Which again, you're not going to get an industrial use diamond <laughs> at, at a Trump event, you know, <laughs> at a gala put on by the president. It's going to be more uh, ornate, more decorative, more significant than, you know, a diamond tooth saw blade or, you know, something like, like that. <laughs> but it does go back to Barry's dream, the idea yes. of full quantum mechanical system. Yeah. yeah that is run on diamonds and you have this big piece. Right. Wow. I think the diamond is actually something. Okay. And I, I almost feel like you know, when, when we're in the middle of interpreting dreams, mm -hmm. we, we get thoughts and this is how the Holy Spirit speaks to us mm -hmm. is something will come to our mind. And we know after doing this thousands of times that you don't ignore your thoughts. You just, <laughs> you're in a place to hear. And when a thought comes in and, and I almost see the diamond though, this doesn't make sense. And so you just keep talking and then the Holy spirit gives you more. Right. Right. But I see the diamond almost as like a word of declaration, mm -hmm. you know, and I think of even, well, thank you. I think of, the Holy Spirit just reminded me like apples of gold in settings of silver. Mm -hmm. So is a word aptly spoken in due season. Yes. So that relates the idea of the elaborate and the ornate and the priceless to words and declarations. And so the idea of a quantum system. Now, if you understand yeah. even the least little bit about quantum or quantum entanglement or Einstein, Rosenberg bridges or anything like that. If you go down, my background's nuclear physics. So, ah. but if you go down that <laughs> a little bit, you can understand how our words and our frequency have effect physically in the real world. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of this being a priceless piece of, of uh declaration that is put into um in Barry's example, is put into a computer-like server slash system that becomes what the new quantum financial system runs off of. And I don't want to equate it to quantum financial systems because that sounds so Federal Reserve. And your your dream is not about the Federal Reserve. This was yeah. Barry's. Yeah, that was you know, yours. Is is mine yours. was a banquet. It was yeah, good times. <laughs> It was good times and it was, <laughs> but besides being of great aesthetic value as diamonds are, they're also ridiculously valuable. Yeah. Ridiculously. Like for you to have a diamond like this, you know, a lot of people would want to keep it. Other people would want to sell it and buy five houses for their kids or, you know, you know, whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. But the idea that it's typically a level of wealth that is beyond what the most average person mm -hmm. is going to be able to fathom. If you're a billionaire, uh, you know, a 20 or 40 carat diamond, it's still going to have value to you yeah. because there's so not many of them in the world. Um, <clears throat> but I think the idea that it was for you, I believe it was given to you by design. It was placed in your cup, in your name tag, your place setting, the president knew it. Um, and then the thief immediately comes. And I, I I would guarantee that the thief somehow possibly knew it too. If he was going to steal it, he should have stole it before you got there when they were setting the table. Mm. But it could be that they didn't know where the diamonds were and they didn't have time to go searching through every cup. Yeah. So then when somebody says, oh, wow, look at this. 
this, you know, like, okay, clearly, but he's yeah. right there to the right second there. you get it to try to steal, yeah. it. you know, and, and that's what the enemy does. That's what Satan does, you know, mm -hmm. immediately, whether it's a promotion or even a, a word or a relationship or mm -hmm. given something that is a, a much level higher, abundantly more than we can ask or think like extravagant. Yeah. Yes. The enemy tries to steal, kill, and destroy. And so mm -hmm. he tries to steal at this dark, nefarious figure. I don't think it represents the devil. I do actually think it represents um, darkness in our government. Yeah. The deep state is such an overused term, mm -hmm. but this is an agent of a nefarious force driven by dark motives um, that wants yeah. to steal and then try to give you something fake and the whole right. idea is for you to believe that it's the real thing. That's right. It reminds me of when they changed the calculation on how they calculate inflation. And now they're mm -hmm. telling us, oh, it's not that bad. And we're all remember what it was yeah. like to buy gas for two or three dollars less a gallon. Yeah. And in the meantime, you have liars in the government press corps who are constantly saying, oh, well, unemployment is down and this and, and, and we're all just like nobody believes anything you say anymore at all. And I mean, it reminds me of the press secretary and mm -hmm. which is interesting because <laughs> she's a dark person, <laughs> but when she gets up and just says, Oh, well, this is it. Yeah. You know, he's not really, he's, he's fine and fully capable of being the, and we're just all like the guy literally can't walk across the stage on his own. <laughs> And he has his finger on the nuclear button and he's running the free world like, our, our, you know, and so, but it represents a gift given to you personally. That is favor, it's opulence, it's extravagance, so many words to describe it. The enemy is there to immediately try to give you a cheap replacement. Now, he doesn't just mm -hmm. steal it and run. Mm -mm. He tries to give you something so you have something. Right with so much less intrinsic value yeah. than what you were initially given. Wow. And to me, it's, it, it, to me, it's like what they did with our constitution. It actually, it actually reminds me, even the word intrinsic reminds me of the movie national treasure mm -hmm. where they said, we're looking for things of certain historic and intrinsic value. And she's like, Oh, you mean your treasure hunters, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's like the constitution, like the constitution used to mean something. Yeah. And now we have states that are trying to kick a presidential candidate off the ballot because we don't like him. Mm -hmm. He's not been charged with insurrection. He's not been, and he certainly hasn't been convicted of it and zero level of due process. So they won't let him even talk um, with, yeah. with his indictments and the stuff that's, you know, supposedly going on, on, on that whole end. And, and so the whole idea of, the tenets of what we thought were life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, like the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, we have the right to say what we want. All of that stuff is out the window. And now they're telling us, well, this yeah. is this is the law. It's not the law. We don't have to abide by it. We don't have to, we don't have to find people don't know this. You don't have to follow laws that are unconstitutional. There are laws that are written that say you do not have to follow laws that are unconstitutional. Unfortunately, what happens oh. is then you get deplatformed and then they do this and who has the legal fees to go fight all this stuff yeah. all the way up to the Supreme so Court true. for 10 or 12 years later to prove that mm -hmm. they were right. <clears throat> but so that's what's happened is you're not just robbed, you're given a replacement. Yes. Which again, think of you know, if you have a land, brand new Land Rover in your driveway and somebody stole it and gave you a 20 year old Ford Explorer, like, yeah. dude, I know. But now with a diamond, it's not as easy to tell that it's it's fake. Could be a cubic zirconium of, you know, and it's not as easy to tell. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that the, the, the fact that they were trying to give you a counterfeit and uh -huh. sell it to you as being your original gift is very significant. Yes. <laughs> I do too. That even talks about what's in the supposed White House right now. Mm. Fake. <laughs> and, and for them to try to say this is anywhere even in the same universe mm -hmm. as what we had three, three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. It's just a flat out, again, it's, it's, the media has become the prophets of doom 
the liars of our age mm -hmm. and they have been complicit in destroying the fabric of America. And I, I, I constantly, not constantly, but um, I mean, I love prophesying their downfall. Every time I talk about the media, I feel that. And I feel like, may they not succeed every single word wow. that they've spoken against president trump may they be held to count for every mm -hmm. single word because the scripture says no weapon and they've weaponized the media they've weaponized the doj they've weaponized law enforcement they've weaponized the election system they've weaponized the ballot system no weapon formed against you will in any way prosper and every tongue that rises against you shall fall and so i want to declare those in the mainstream media that are lying that are knowingly, willfully lying, that did and that were involved in the conspiracy to pull the wool over the eyes of the American people, whether it was related to medical freedom or the selection, that are trying to sell us a bill of goods and saying, this is this, when it's really not, and they know it's not. May God honor his word, and he is not a man that he should lie, and may, may every word fall to the ground. Yeah. And may... Those companies that need to fall, fall, and may those people that have been put in positions of trust and given the microphone, have the microphone ripped out of their hands and be sequestered to oblivion where we never hear from them again. And that would be easy. And the rest of them, may they be arrested for, you know, <laughs> and whatever. We'll let God deal with them beyond. <laughs> but I, I just think it's interesting that this... This idea of the fake, it, it th there's a part of this that's not this dream necessarily, but the idea of stealing what's valuable and handing off the fake, there's a part of that that's happening in the church right now. Oh. And it's even happening in prophecy. Wow. Where wow. people are, it, it's what the Bible talks about is the conspiracy of the prophets. Wow. Where people who have a prophetic voice and were given a prophetic influence have relegated and I'm not judging their motives and I'm not talking about any person in particular, but it looks like they're doing it for attention, for money and for likes for a level of, of fame. And they, you know, God told me blah, blah, blah. And, and it's like, and, and a lot of what they're doing is they're parroting the conspiracy of the mainstream media. And it's like, guys, did God really tell you that? Have you done your research? Have you found if any of this is factual? And so now they're pundits parroting the narrative of darkness. And I think there's a lot of those, and we're finding out, and there's more to come, that I think those will be removed as well. And I'm not here to prophesy death to certain institutions. I'm here to say the thief is getting caught. Yes. If there's one That's thing we can say the about encouraging your, part, yes, getting I I agree. It is the really encouraging part. You immediately, the true prophetic, the true discerning, immediately recognizes the counterfeit hmm. and says, "He stole my thing." And then you get loud and you get bold and you call mm -hmm. it out, and you even call out what party he's known to be a yes. part of. Yes, and I, you know, this is much bigger than. Uh, Republican versus Democrat, it's, of course, it's, you know, light versus dark. But in the context of the dream, that is an enemy that has stolen from us. Mm -hmm. So do you think there's a double meaning when I ended the dream, everybody is roaring in laughter, and I said, I, I brought the house down. Do you think there's... I definitely do. Okay. Absolutely. Because I know God loves plays on words. He does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's, there is a time coming when the thief will be caught, the wealth will be restored, and we will all laugh. And it'll be clear, and it won't be muddied, and it won't be, if you think of we're stuck in a moment right now mm -hmm. between your diamond being stolen and it being mm -hmm. returned. Yes. And that's a moment that we've been stuck in for several years. Yes. And when it is returned and the thief is caught and he's been pointed out and he's even been labeled, 
that we're all going to laugh and rejoice that, and thank goodness we hated to go through that, but yeah. now there's no thieves in the room. Wow. I also thought it could mean a discovery of a theft like that could bring the house down, talking about Capitol Hill. Yeah, or the White House. Whoever hired that waiter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Could be. Hmm. I really cool that. dream. Wow. John, you got, I like, I I thought we were going to do three three dreams tonight, you guys. <laughs> I'm <laughs> always so overly optimistic. But you just, you mine such treasure out of dreams. I love it. Um, we'll have to save my other two dreams for another day. <laughs> yeah, let's do it again. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, Diane. my goodness. It's always such a pleasure. Thank you, John. I just, I learned so much and... Um, I know that that our audience loves having you too, because it opens up how God communicates to us in dreams and uh, just shows us how to work with the Holy Spirit in figuring out um, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> you know, I think there's a part of this that's related to that. Um, my message, which is something I'm getting louder and louder about, one of the biggest revelations that I feel that we've gotten is that all dreams come from God. And I fought it for four years. I didn't believe it, Diana. I looked up every scripture on, I'm going to find every demonic dream. I'm going to find that. And I had no other place to go than to believe what God told me anyway, which sounds mm -hmm. ridiculous. But when I say that so many people are like, well, I've always heard. And that's what I said. I've always heard there's demonic dreams, soul dreams, mm -hmm. God dreams. Mm -hmm. I now believe after spending thousands of hours interpreting only nightmares wow. and two entire years studying every dream in Bible in the Bible and every verse on dreams, wow. which we give the ebook and, and the course away for free on oh. dream life decoded. You go take the oh course, my gosh, that's great. decide for yourself. But I feel like it's, it's this is there's a group of people and it's, they don't mean to be backed by the enemy, but they are. There's religious leaders, pastors, prophets that teach that like one tenth of your dreams are from God. And oh, what they're God. doing is they're taking your diamond yeah. and they're giving you something false. And I believe that God speaks so loudly and so clearly. Yes. And you and I know we write every single dream we get down mm -hmm. and then we'll figure it out. We'll ask the Holy Spirit. Cause we didn't know when we started, we thought we were going to do three dreams today. We didn't know that God was going to reveal everything that he did. No. And <laughs> What if you would have blown this dream off and like, oh, that's a silly dream. Yeah. That's not because I didn't get it. You know, it was just, and now it makes perfect sense in hindsight, but at the time it did not. Right. Well, this has been really awesome. Thank you so much. And just sort of want to remind all of you, it will be Tuesday the 20th at around 5 p.m. What did we say? Five, four, four, 30, four, 30, four 30. Eastern or three thirty central. Correct. All right. We'll so. start and come on and bring a short dream. Yes. <laughs> we want to do long it. This, your this dream. was a medium sized dream, but it's still, <laughs> but, but yeah. I, I love people to experience this with their own dreams. Cause you know, I used yes. to tell a lot of stories about dreams and then I realized people were waiting for me to stop talking so they could share their dream. People don't want to hear the stories. They okay. want their dream interpreted. So. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again for having me on, Diane. Wow. It's always thank a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for offering to do a live dream uh, show with me for uh, my audience. So absolutely. Uh, I'm inviting you on, audience. This is your chance to get your dream <laughs> live on the air and have John. And I'll, hopefully I'll have some input to have with it as well. And Sure you will. Uh, so thank you all for joining us. Um, we really appreciate you being with us, spending your time. And until we meet again, may you be blessed with his peace, his great grace, his glory, and many dreams. Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>